Good morning. My name is Georg Nikolaevsky, and I represent today SKID Solutions, a qualified trust service provider located in Estonia. I'm very excited to be invited to participate in digital discussions. And in my presentation today, I will cover successfully deployed a new generation cross-border electronic identity solutions we launched in the Baltic countries with the examples on the major Baltic banks. But first of all, let us look at the global trends that are driving the market. First, of course, is the digitalization of businesses, the services, which is now more accelerated due to the global pandemic situation. Nowadays, users expect simple, convenient experiences. Therefore, the usability is the key importance for them. Growing popularity of the mobile devices puts the mobile at first on a very important position. And we, ha we also have to remember that the fraud is also growing. The fraudsters have been exploiting the weaknesses of the poor password-protected systems in online services. Different biometrical techniques are on a rise worldwide and becoming more affordable to leverage. The market is driven by the banking, because in this segment, the majority of transactions are happening. And it is very important, especially for the banks, to protect the customer with secure and convenient solutions. So if I briefly talk about our activities, so our company has been providing electronic identity service for the public and the private sector for 20 years. Decades of experience, our leading experts, research, technology, all that together bring us to provide efficient and affordable solutions to the nations in the, in the world. And by taking advantage of that experience, and also considering the growth of the mobile trend, we brought in 2017 to the market the new generation mobile application-based electronic identity called Smart ID. With Smart ID, you don't need any special SIM cards, you don't need any additional hardware, or you don't need even the card readers. And, it's, and the most important is that we even removed the borders, of course, inside the European Union. So what is Smart ID? Smart ID is a personal identification solution for authenticating and providing electronic signatures. We created fast and convenient solution that can be used on different devices, so users are not limited only to one device. In case if something happens, you can always use your second identity. It is providing high level of security and advanced cryptography and proven public key infrastructure enables that your services are secured. It was very important uh, to address uh, European Union, so therefore the cross-country usage was brought in that, uh, in that solution to the importance. And of course, when you're dealing with electronic transactions, it is always important that you're uh, leaving a legally binding trace. So therefore, with a smart ID, you are able to provide qualified electronic signatures, which are equal to the handwritten one. And of course, to create transparency and the trust in cross-border transactions, smart ID is compliant to the ADAS, GDPR, and uh, payment service directive, which is important in the financial sector. I already mentioned that uh, interface is quite simple, seamless, and intuitive. So, for the users, it's very, it's very easy and quickly to navigate using, uh, using the menu. Also, in case of addressing uh, the frauds, we, we introduced the different ways how we could uh, help them fighting uh, these cases. We have implemented uh, several ways, and one of these is uh, to bring the awareness of the user of, of his action. So, for example, if he's trying to log into the service or trying to make a payment, he will see the confirmation asking him, like, are you sure that this is what you want to do? Another additional new security feature is a three-code solution. The three-code solution uh, provides e-service providers with, uh, with additional third layer of protection in addition to the authentication and digital signature. So where user can select the right PIN code and if the code is not selected, then the transaction cannot be completed. 
A couple of weeks before the global pandemic, SK introduced new biometry and AI-based onboarding method for the smart ID. During the state of emergency in the last spring, when people movements were restricted, smart ID new identification method was the only way for them to conduct necessary activities online. I also put uh, the link below where you can quickly check how simple and quick this method is. But actually it is. All you need is your governmentally approved document supporting the biometry, your mobile device and yourself. And this is it. So what we achieved so far? With operating a little bit over three years with the smart ID, we covered nearly three million people in the Baltic countries who are making actually more than 65 million transactions every month. And it was quite important also to address the foreign people living here in the Baltic countries. And we already have 34 countries supported in, uh, in our solution. We are also quite proud that on a daily basis, we have 1 million active users who are conducting the transactions in different e-services. So now let's quickly jump and look what is happening in the financial world. So on the use cases with the banks, the forcing factors was the rapidly changing the regulation. And uh, the banks has to also modify and change the services. So for example, from the 2017 April, uh, it was notified that um, the code cards were not a secure element anymore. And the bank has to find the new alternative and provide more strong customer authentication solutions. After integrating our service, one of the banks indicated that uh, simplicity was quite important for them. Uh, and uh, that actually boosted the growth of the mobile uh, experience of the users. So basically, every second person in the bank started more actively using uh, and accessing the critical for them service. It also allowed them to use uh, the service across countries, so because in the Baltics, uh, financial institutions are operating across the countries. So it was very important to bring that possibility to them. And in, in, and in general, more than 75% of the users who started to use the new identity solution started more frequently, nearly four times more addressing the services online. This is one of the examples how for example, users can be motivated. Because Smart ID is free of charge for the end users, it is very convenient to see that comparing to another methods, you can take it uh, into the use with, uh, with the easy benefit. With the, with the case of another bank, it was very important to bring again the awareness of the user. So what you see is what you sign is the ability of the customer to verify their actions on uh, uh, independent device. And this is something that we also were able to introduce. And again, after implementing the services, more than half of, uh, of the transactions were increased and in the usage of online services. So in overall, what you can see here is the summary uh, of the growth after a couple of weeks from the launch of the service in all three countries. So that growth shows us uh, that uh, there was a really high need of secure authentication solution on the market. And this is why this growth was boosted so much. By the end of the first year, uh, the service achieved uh, over 600,000 users. And nowadays, every second person in the Baltic countries is using Smart ID solution. So what we are able to provide? So we are able to provide Smart ID as it is. So you can just simply take it as a service and it can be used in all European space. Also, we can provide you the different combinations like uh, license-based product or the white-labeled product or any other possible combination which uh, your uh, use case can come up with. So to summarize, I would like to say that if you are selecting our services, so you are staying with secure, innovative, fast, convenient, and international services. And with that, I would like to end up my presentation. Thank you, and please join us in the breakout room where you can find out more details about biometrical identification or how the security, is protect, uh, security of the solution is provided, how the, uh, the control of the users are provided in uh, 
in the Smart ID application. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Georg, uh, for, for this presentation, for, for the facts and figures that you provided us with, not just for Estonia, but also for, for other countries. Um, before we talk about the questions, there are many for you. Uh, I will take a look at the uh, most recent task, the poll that the audience members uh, filled out. The question was, what kind of EID carrier would you prefer using? And we should get uh, the results on the screen in a second. Ah, uh, yes, and there we see it. So um, we see quite a, quite a strong uh, preference for either a card-based EID uh, or, and that's the most, most chosen option, uh, um, something on a mobile phone. Uh, very few people in favor of third-party login options. Um, do you feel like that's, uh, um, that's your experience with, with other countries around the world as well, that they want something more state-provided than a private sector-provided uh, solution, or what do you think? Uh, yes, we actually do see that uh, happening in in many countries that uh, state and the private sector are operating separately and mm -hmm. uh, quite often they are bringing uh, their own solution to the market. So so this is why I I Estonia is quite a unique where you have a very great co cooperation between public and the private sector. Yeah. Yeah, this fragmentation doesn't really need to happen. Um, sometimes in some countries we also see, uh, for example in Sweden, I believe it's called Bank ID, provided by the private sector, and the government sector has sort of taken it on board for their own uh, login solutions. So there are different ways of handling, uh, handling this, t this topic, this challenge, uh, but yes. I think Estonia has quite, a, quite an interesting combination. Uh, let's delve right into the questions. Uh, the first one, I believe I know the answer to, uh, but I'll ask you anyway, is smart ID software open source? There's nothing wrong with saying no. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, um, it's not an open source. Mm -hmm. uh, we can, if, if you're interested, uh, as I mentioned, that uh, uh, the product can be provided as a license, so you can uh, integrate. That means that you will have your, you will have the access to the source code, and you can uh, create your, uh, your own application and solution. And I think actually you mentioned the the white label opportunity as well. So yeah, different countries can make this service what they need it to be. Not every single country has the exact same requirements, both legal and technological. Yes. Uh, so to have this flexibility, uh, or in order to be flexible like that, you don't need it to be open source necessarily. So there's nothing nothing wrong with that, in my opinion. Uh, another very uh, highly upvoted question is, can other countries beyond the Baltic states join the smart ID, quote unquote, community? Uh, could other countries join that network of nations, basically? Yes, of course. And uh, this is what I really wanted to, uh, to deliver as a, as a message, that mm. uh, our solution is uh, certified for, for the European Union, so any country in the European Union can use it as a service. So it means that with the simple integration uh, and uh, onboarding uh, methods, this can be taken into the use in other countries as well. But uh, that also doesn't mean that it's only for the private sector. So it also can be adopted by the public sector as well. Yeah. So, so if the gov government thinks that uh, this is suitable solution as alternative maybe to the existing one, so yes, of course. Yeah, absolutely. Um, another question was, uh, what industries can Smart ID be used in? Do you only focus on the finance sector? Um, as far as I understand, uh, anything with a login portal could be an applicable um, cooperation partner for you, but maybe you want to expand on that. Uh, yes, so <clears throat> uh, as I mentioned in my presentation, that in the financial sector, we can see that the majority of the transactions are happening. Yeah. And uh, uh, of course, uh, it, can, it can be used in the public services if you want to access your tax reports or, or order some services from the government. Uh, from the telecommunication sector, we, we do see that uh, there is a usage and, and the health sector. So yeah. basically any sector can be used. Uh, now this here is, I guess, um uh, a more f fundamental question also about uh, how do we set up these different kinds of systems. Uh, SKID is a trust service provider. Yes. How do you feel about trustless networks such as blockchain-based systems? Uh, we, are, we, we are using the public key infrastructure. Yeah. So this is, uh, this is where we based our service. And, uh, and, and that is why we are creating uh, the trust using 
uh, using that infrastructure. Yeah, I, I also think that uh, when, when we talk about blockchain implementations uh, in governments around the world, I can't think of many examples where a government has chosen a proper public blockchain, but rather a permission blockchain where, again, there are a few stakeholders that hold the different parts. Uh, so it's not, not a real trustless network either. It just relies on several trust providers rather than mm -hmm. one. So um, how, how real the blockchain advantages are in the real world, the way that they would be implemented by uh, the public sector, um, can at least be debated. So, so certainly keep an eye out for that. Um, what else do we have here? Uh, is there another EID solution in Estonia that can cooperate with the Smart ID? From my understanding, uh, Smart ID is one of the carriers uh, that helps you authenticate with your Estonian electronic ID. Uh, would that be a fair description? Um, yeah, yeah j just to explain uh, that that um, uh, Smart ID is. Uh, let's say, the full electronic identity mm. that can be used uh, independently from, uh, uh, from the existing ones. Mm -hmm. But smart ID is actually derived identity. So we are basing it on, uh, on your physical identity issued by the government. Yeah. Um, what else do we have here? Yes. Aha. Um, so this, I don't know why this question did not deserve any more upvotes, uh, but I will ask it because I think it's a very good question. Uh, which jurisdictions are covered with the chosen qualified trust servers, uh, is, uh, trust service providers issued ID or a certificate? Like, are there certain um, legal requirements that you have to fulfill to be accepted in a certain territory as a trust service provider, and for which ones? Have you been able to serve the population already? Uh, yes, so well, we can provide the service in uh, in the European Union mm -hmm. because we are in the ADAS uh, ADAS space. Correct. But uh, of course, there are some uh, local uh, um, local let's say legislations that you also have to uh, deal with, and then sometimes the, the uh, let's say the, the local legislation requires that we do some additional steps. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, lastly, when we, uh, perhaps a question that I, I'm all also wondering, uh, when we talk about the implementation phase itself, how long would you say does it go from, uh, from start to finish, from analyzing the legal framework to implementing a solution in a given country? Uh, if there is someone watching uh, from a, a state or, or a national government uh, saying, I would like to try out Smart ID, what, what framework, uh, what time frame can they expect roughly for the implementation? Well, that pretty much depends what do they have <laughs> in the country. So, yes, so if, if there is uh, absolutely <clears throat> nothing, then of course they need to establish the, the legal ground base in, yeah. in the country because the technology is there. So if we provide it immediately, so it means that you can still leverage from the security and, and, and the compliance. But, but of course, the, uh, the legislation uh, must be also fixed. Absolutely. Uh, well, Georg, it's been uh, a pleasure to have you here on stage. Thank you so much for all of your insights uh, regarding Smart ID, both in Estonia and uh, around the world.